Now, it's time for the Coach Benny Hardaway Show, presented by Cook's Pest Control. The show is also supported by AutoZone. From parts to helpful advice, AutoZone has everything you need to get in the zone. AutoZone, Chick-fil-A, Eat More Chicken, your Memphis Toyota dealers, Toyota, Let's Go Places, the Tennessee Lottery, and Subway, make it what you want. Welcome in, everyone. Nice to have you aboard. This was a tough weekend. The Tigers slip at home, first time this year, to a very talented Georgia team with a lottery pick. And then today, the news, down to 21 in the AP pool. <laughs> One loss at home, that's pretty uh, penal, I guess you could say. Yeah, I think it's uh, incredible how, you know, initially we were ranked 16th with the number one recruiting class in the country. And we work our way up to nine, and we kind of inched up beating some pretty good teams on the road. And then to lose one game without our uh, second leading score at home and then to drop down 12 spots, I think it's, it's so disrespectful. Mm. Uh, and that gets me to DJ Jeffries, and obviously the Tigers missed him. You had to play so many guys so many minutes without him in the rotation. And everyone I know wants to know, how is he? Do you think he'll be healthy for Wichita State? Well, he's missing practice today for sure just to get some rest, and he's on the meds uh, at home, and hopefully he'll be ready to go on the road to, uh, to Wichita. Uh, it was just an unfortunate situation. Obviously, anyone can get sick. And uh, we just wish DJ well, a speedy recovery. And I know uh, this took you even by surprise because when we do our little pregame radio stuff, you thought he would be playing, and he came out and warmed up. Yeah, um, I didn't know anything about it until probably 30 minutes before the game that he wasn't going to play. He said he was sick, and that's when I found out, and we had to make the adjustment, and I didn't adjust well enough. Uh, there were so many things that I played back in my mind after that game was over, but at the end of the day, you got to make your free throws at home, and you got to yeah. make big plays. Yeah, no, there's no doubt about it, but plenty of basketball still to be played. No question about that. Here's what we've got coming up on today's Penny Show. We will take a look at that Georgia game. We'll give you a little bit of a recap. Uh, and you'll watch this thing was a heck of a game with 20 lead changes, 10 ties. Cook's Pest Control Player of the Week. Well, that's, that's pretty easy. He was just named Freshman of the Week as well. Then a little Toyota Inside Access that will be with Lester Quinones. And then the AutoZone Road Ahead. It is very tough indeed. Thursday at Wichita State. Sunday in Tampa against USF. That's why we play these seasons. Interesting games ahead for sure. And an interesting show coming your way in a minute. Don't go anywhere. This is the Penny Hardaway TV show. You're watching the Coach Penny Hardaway Show. So uh, CBS was in town. Had Clark Kellogg, Spiro Dito. That was big time stuff. And, and they put on a show. The Tigers and the Georgia Bulldogs. We just didn't like the final score. That is for sure. But Coach, this was a great game. When you talk about 20 lead changes uh, and, and 10 ties back and forth. And you even had a chance down three with two seconds to go. Yeah, obviously, you know, we wanted this game. When it was brought to us, uh, we thought we were going to have a totally different team on the floor from the beginning of the season and, and what we really actually played with. But uh, they were uh, they were skilled. Uh, but at home, you have to take care of business. You got to do what you have to do. And we just didn't we didn't make enough plays for me. And then you can't miss that many free throws at home as well. Fall behind here a little bit, uh, but then right back into the game and. How about Lomax and, Kenyo, uh, and and Precious hits a three here. He hits that three on a regular basis. There's no stopping him. Yeah, like I said, we always work on that every day. We're one of the uh, few teams in the country that kind of work on skill play, skill set and, uh, and work on your game every day. And you have to make 100 threes. And uh, Precious has been doing that and doing a really good job of it. You, uh, like we say, fell behind early here. But again, that's been your, your thing, storming back. Alo is a big part of that. And that was a nice feed, and I'd love to see Lance Thomas get going. Yeah, Lance uh, was a big piece for us in this game because we felt like their big man was going to stay in the paint. And obviously that was a great layup for him on the, on the pick and roll. Uh, went 0 for 3 from 3, but we're going to need his outside shooting for sure as the season goes on. And then Lester with the air guitar, and the Tigers build their biggest lead in this half. 
of five, you know they're going to come back. You played good defense in this game for the most part. Uh, and and that is you held them to 39 percent, but uncharacteristically, they're not a good three-point shooting team. And for whatever reason, in this game, guys who don't normally hit threes hit threes, even if they were defended. Yeah, you know, it's just one of those situations that where they uh, they made the shots that they had to make. Like you said, they made 10 threes. I don't know if they made 10 threes in either game all season long. I don't think so. And uh, the guys that were making them are poor three-point shooters, but they made them when they had to, and uh, you have to tip your hat to them. Tomorrow, Wheeler, they are not known as proficient three-point shooters. Crump is, and he had a tough night, but at least you're able to come back. And early on, you got Boogie Ellis going, and you'd already talked about how you wanted to get him going. I've never seen a three take that many bounces as good for Isaiah. Yeah, we, we definitely got to get Boogie going. He's been struggling a little bit. It's good to see a couple go down for him. And uh, Isaiah is the same way. I couldn't find a way to get him back in the game because Georgia went small. But uh, we're going to work on some things this week to kind of help those big stay in the game. I don't think he could have had a better game for Precious other than winning to up his stock. And he's going to move up in those mock drafts. Yeah, you know, 20 and 15, I mean, we, he gave us all that we asked for. To play him 38 minutes was really too many minutes. Um, I just kind of went with my gun on that, and he kind of just got worn out. And it kind of cost us at the end because he didn't have the energy. And uh, 65 points was enough to give them. We should have had 75 or 80, but it's just how it worked. Alo keeping you in this game, and uh, you know he was he was one that had a positive one. And look at the hops on Precious Achua. So back and forth it goes. But here in the end, let's talk a little bit about execution. Four minutes and 35 seconds went by at the end, and Memphis had one point, and that was from the free throw line. Yeah, it turned into ISO basketball. You know, when it's a one-on-one, -on -one, and we really don't want to do that. We want situations to where. Uh, we're sharing the basketball, we're drawing two people, kicking it to an open teammate and then getting open shots. And then we gave up too many layups. You know, our pickup point for number 15 was supposed to be in the paint. He got too active and uh, it really just cost us. Amy and Ball are on the hustle and, uh, you know, Precious keeps you in it. And this, yeah, you, you have a lead of eight in this second half. I guess, I guess you got to give them a lot of credit. Like you said, ten threes in this game. They haven't done it all year. Yeah, you know, it was just unfortunate, and uh, we just have to bounce back from it and, and be ready for Wichita. But tip your hat to Georgia. They made the shots that they had to make. And you stay in this game. You did a really good job on Anthony Edwards. They're all everything player. Uh, just wouldn't go down. Chances at the end. And here is the last chance. Two seconds to go. I know you wanted a entry pass a little further yeah, right down the road, but it's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll learn from this. I've learned from it. Uh, I played the game back in my head a hundred times, so I'm ready for the next situation. And I really love what you said. I think it was in the press conference where this isn't a loss. This is a learning lesson, mm -hmm. and that's how you view defeat. Yeah, well, you know, obviously when it took away from our bench, our bench averages 34 points a game, has been averaging 34 points a game. You put lesser Quinones in, 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 the, uh, in the starting lineup, and then the bench gets shorter. Yeah. And then I played the guys too many minutes. So, like I said, I've learned from it. Uh, the team will learn from it, and we'll move forward. All right, we were going to move forward here in one minute, and when we do, we're going to let Penny grade and tell you what he would like from nine of his players. That's next on the Penny Hardaway TV show. You're watching the Coach Penny Hardaway Show. Clark Kellogg, the great CBS analyst, I think paid you a great compliment when I was talking with him before the game. He said, coaching is really teaching. And so let's, let's take that teaching and how good a teacher you are, and we're going to let you sort of give out some grades here and what you would like to see from various players as this season progresses. And we will start by taking a look at Damian Baugh. So how... Have you liked his performance for the freshman from Nashville? What would you like to see more? Well, I like that his, uh, his energy is always high, and uh, he knows how to make plays for teammates. We need him to be more aggressive getting to the basket and finishing layups around that rim like that. You know, that's what I get. I give him a B on the year because he's one of our higher energy players. He has, he really has been that way, and you know, his, his shooting percentages from the outside have been pretty darn well. Uh, so you, you have to like a lot of what you have seen. Now, Tyler Harris, I know he did not have the best of games the other day, but he has been, as you say, built for the big moments. Yeah, obviously that's a, uh, a game that Tyler Harris is not going to have uh, many of those type of games where he's not going to score. He's not going to make an outside jump shot. 
What I, would, I mean, he's been playing excellent. I would give him a B as well. He's been playing great basketball with Alex Lomax, making big shots. I love for him to handle the ball more and be, a, be more of a weapon with the ball in his hands up top. And have you ever seen a bigger, quicker release? Now Boogie Ellis, here's a guy, started like in New York, was incredible, went through some lulls, looks like he's getting it back a little. Yeah, Boogie's struggling. He's struggling really bad right now, and we're trying to get him going. Uh, one thing that he is doing better now is rebounding the basketball. He had eight rebounds last game, which we needed all of them. Uh, struggling shooting the basketball is what he's known for, and I'm sure he'll, he'll come out of that slump really soon, has not played well at all this season. A couple games he at, at Barclays Center and then at home against UIC, but uh, we, did, we definitely need him to show up. And here is the guy that is your little general without a question. Those two steals off to remember them forever against Anthony Edwards. What do you uh, what do you grade Alo? Well, I give Alo an A right now because he's, he's changed his entire game from last year. He's a calming uh, factor for us. He guards the best players on the other teams. He gets everybody involved and he scores, so, and he rebounds. So he's doing a lot of stuff for us for sure. Anything different you'd like to see? Well, I'd like him to be more vocal. I'd like him to be uh, a guy that kind of runs the team more vocally instead of just being a guy that goes out there and just gets it done. And then your son. Yeah, it's hard to be the dad and the coach at the same time. I know that. Well, I give Jaden a C. He should be hired because he's, he's not going to make uh, a lot of mistakes. He's going to play the game the right way. Uh, not going to hurt you. Going to stick to the game plan. Going to make the right play on offense. I just need him to be more aggressive way more aggressive with the basketball because he can play make more than what he does. Would you like to see him go to the hole more? Because you, I think, talked about that with plays like that. Yeah, absolutely. I don't want him to be a three-point shooter because he's a guy that can get to the basket for sure. And then here's Lester Quinones. Came in being known as a sharpshooter. When I talked with him about that, he said, I'm not just a sharpshooter. I have an overall game. I'll do dirty work. Yeah, I'll give Lester a B as well. Uh, wasn't his best game last game because a lot of dribbling, a lot of trying to uh, go one-on-one, -on -one, and that's really not his game. But all the toughness, all the tough rebounds, uh, and he's been making open shots. So uh, the one thing that I would love to see him do more is drive to the basket, post up more, instead of just relying on threes. He is a fun guy to watch. Now here's DJ Jeffries. First thing we want is health. DJ, please. We need you, no question about it. Maybe your most consistent player this year? Yeah, no doubt about it. I give DJ an A as well. Uh, like I said, all these guys are young. They're, they're very young, but DJ has been doing everything for us, rebounding, assists, scoring, defending, blocking shots, doing everything that, he, that we need him to do. Uh, the one thing I would say is that he needs to be more aggressive offensively. You know, there's been a lot of games where he's four for six, six for seven. He has the opportunity to go out there and do those things. And then the double-double machine. The only guy in the American Athletic Conference averaging a double-double is Precious Achu. Yeah, proud of Precious because he came in with one mindset and he changed to where he is right now, and I would give him an A as well because he's rebounding the basketball at a high level. He's scoring the basketball for us. He's protecting the rim, and he's doing man everything. Without having James in there, he's definitely been a, a huge inside force for us. Last player, Isaiah Maurice. Never seen a three like that. Yeah, Isaiah, I'm going to give him a C. I, I really want to give him more, but he can do way more. Isaiah's just, he can't, he, he hasn't been able to get over the hump defensively, and that's what we really need him the most. His outside shooting, I'm sure we can definitely get more of that. But we need him to be an inside presence offensively and uh, defensively, and that's where he has to grow. It is not quite the halfway mark of the season, but when you enter conference play, you know, you, you're sort of uh, at, at, at a new season. And so that's why we decided we would give you the grades uh, right there. And uh, there's no doubt that the guy that has been living up to the billing is Precious Sachua, and he is the Cooks. Pest Control Player of the Week. Precious, I, I don't know what more you can say for him. Again, Freshman of the Week in the conference. He's getting all the accolades. And as we mentioned earlier, he's got to be shooting up his stock. Yeah, he, I'm sure he is. Uh, obviously, he just wants to win first. And uh, he's listening to us. And uh, he's going out there and doing everything that we need him to do. And like you said, with him doing that, He's definitely a kid that's definitely shooting up uh, in the uh, NBA, NBA rankings. And he took that loss so hard. You can tell he really cares. Yeah, I mean, I played him 38 minutes. I mean, he didn't get a chance to get any rest. And uh, he gave us 20 and 15. So uh, I overworked him in that game. Uh, that's something that shouldn't happen again. I'm, I'm a guy about playing by the, by the numbers, strength and numbers. So, you know, just got to continue to push. Precious, the player of the week could be the player of the year. We got a little inside access coming your way. It's good to have Lester Quinones back after he broke that hand. He'll talk about his game in just a minute.
You're watching the Coach Penny Hardaway Show. Time for a little inside access. One of the most interesting guys on this team is clearly Lester Quinones. And sometimes you can learn by not playing. With an injury, he's forced on the bench, but all it opened up his eyes. Back to Quinones, deep three. Another one! He is blistering hot right now. It feels great to just get back out there with my guys. Um, being on the, on the sideline for those uh, four to five weeks was just... Uh, Helping me just see the game differently, uh, not from a player's perspective, but just like on the sideline, just seeing all the little stuff, all the talk and communication, all the things we need uh, improvement with, and just bringing that back. Uh, it just feels great to just be back with them. Up top, Quinones. They go at him. He drives down. Left hand off glass, rimming around and go. Just being that guy, um, I think those three to four weeks I was out, uh, just really just being a guy on the sideline, just cheering my teammates on, uh, getting them water when they needed water, uh, wiping the sweat off the floor, all the little things like that that other people just don't feel like doing. Um, I just do all that dirty work and stuff like that, and I just translate that onto the court. And um, it's just really, it's just natural to me to just always be that guy to just do the right thing. <clears throat> and if it's, if, if it's helping my team win, I'm 100% with it. Right back to ball, drives down, leaves it back for Quinones. He's got a wide open three. Bottom! I feel like it kind of just brought us closer together. Uh, now that the, key, the team's just being cut short, I think it's only 11 of us now. Uh, we're just coming uh, closer. Our bond's just getting be uh, better. We're just becoming brothers now. And uh, everybody's just having fun now. I feel like Penny could just switch up the lineups more. We could go small and big now. Uh, he had five guards out there at one point today. So um, just really, like I said, just really everybody just coming back, just being closer together now is just the main goal. Penny, sometimes it, it sounds like he's a coach. Yeah, well, you know, he's a, he's a guy, a high IQ guy that understands the game. And I was talking to him every day about what do you see, what do you need to improve. When you come back, you understand what your role is going to be. And he answered all the questions right. So. You know, he's a guy that we're, we're definitely glad to have, inside, outside guy. Look for more. Yeah, I, I can't wait to see more of him. He is, a, he is a joy to watch. We take the break. When we come back, the auto zone road ahead is ahead. You're watching the Coach Penny Hardaway Show. Time for the AutoZone Road Ahead, and it is really on the road, and it will be a difficult week. We start in Wichita. That'll be Thursday. That's a 6 o'clock game. Last time Wichita State lost at home was to you, Penny. They're going to be waiting on you. Yeah, great environment. Uh, they have an all-black out uh, where they're going to wear their black uniforms, and we have to wear white. They're looking for revenge because we were the last team to beat them there. And then uh, again on the road on Sunday at three, it'll be the Bulls of South Florida, eight and seven, but uh, one and one in conference. Play. Yeah, they're going to play tough down there. Last year we got down, I think, 30 to two. Yeah. Or something of that nature. And then Jeremiah hit like 38 points in the second half. 40. 40 points in the second half. So definitely looking forward to going back down there and making up for that. I, I've got the feeling that one will be a whole different ball game than it was oh, yeah, no doubt. a year ago. So we're busy this week. We'll see you right back here next Monday. Have a great week, everybody. Thanks for watching the Coach Penny Hardaway Show, presented by Cook's Pest Control. The show is also supported by AutoZone. From parts to helpful advice, AutoZone has everything you need to get in the zone. AutoZone, Chick-fil-A, Eat More Chicken, your Memphis Toyota dealers, Toyota, Let's Go Places, the Tennessee Lottery, and Subway. Make it what you want. This copyrighted broadcast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield IMG College under the broadcasting rights granted by the University of Memphis. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the expressed written consent of the University of Memphis and Learfield IMG College. The preceding has been a Learfield IMG College presentation of the Tiger Sports Network.